Hey folks, in this video, I'm gonna show you the best way to learn 251 progressions, which is the foundations of jazz harmony on the piano from the very beginning. Don't worry, we are not going to drown on music theories, not today, because I believe the best way to learn jazz is by learning a simple concept, putting it into practice right away, having fun with it, then go to the next level. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Yakub Saputra, I'm a composer and a jazz pianist and an educator, and I've been teaching music for over 15 years. And today we're going to talk about what is the 251 progression and what is a rootless voicing to play with and three we're gonna learn how to practice them efficiently this is what many jazz teachers forget to teach and many jazz students have no clue what to do so we're going to talk about that for sure but make sure to stay until the end of the video because I have a bonus tips for you to bring your 251 game to a whole new level so without further ado let's play some music so what is a 251 progressions well, 251 progressions is actually the basic or the building block of jazz harmony. It's actually the building block of Western music in itself because 51 is actually the epitome of harmony progressions. Five chord and one. It's basically attention and resolution. A feeling of. <sighs> Music is all about that, tension and resolutions. And you can achieve the state of tension and resolution by the harmonic element or by rhythmical element. When you use a harmonic element, two chords is like this, become tense, and then you resolve. So that's what the 251 is all about. Now you probably wonder why we actually call it 251 progressions. Well, that's because we refer to the chord progressions by its scale degree. I don't want you to be scared about scale degree. What is it? I'm gonna make another video about scale degree. But basically it's this. If I play in the key of C, C is the one, D is the two, E is the three or the third and so on and so forth. F is 4, G is 5, A is 6, B is 7, and then we go back to 1. Or we can actually call it also the root. So in the case of 251 progressions, the 2 is going to be D minor, the 5 is going to be G7, and the 1 is going to be C. I know, I only play the bass right now. I'm only playing the one single note to represent the bass. So in general, the 2 is almost always in minor, the 5 is always in dominant, and the 1, that's going to be a little caveat. In this instance, we're going to do major, but later when we explore a minor 2-5-1 progressions, the 1 could be a minor chord as well. So now we're going to try to play this in a 4-bar phrases. I know, we only have 2-5-1, right? But we're going to play in 4-bar anyway, because the first bar, we're going to play the 2 chords, and then the second bar we're gonna play the five the third bar we're gonna play the one but later on we're gonna repeat the one but we're gonna change the color of the one a little bit so what are we gonna do with the right hand so today we're gonna use a rootless voicing on our right hand a rootless voicing is basically just a voicing to represent a chord but we leave out the root so that means when I play a D minor chord I don't play the D itself because the assumption is either my left hand is gonna play the root or I will be having a bass player that's gonna play the root for me. So for the D minor, we are gonna play this chord. So what I'm playing is F, A, C, and E. And the bass is D, right? So that's the D minor. So essentially what we are playing is actually a D minor seven with tension nine. Now, what do we do on the G7? In the G7, I want you to look very closely, okay? This is my D minor, right? I'm still playing D minor on my right hand. To play my G, I'm just gonna move my C, my finger number three here, slightly to the left, just half step down, like this. And I have my G, or the five. So again, this is the two, this is the five. And yes, this is a G7. This is a G7 voicing. To be exact, you are playing G7 with tension 9 and tension 13. Wow, it's already sophisticated, isn't it? But again, I don't want you to be confused by all these numbers just yet. And then now we are ready to go to the 1. The 1, it's basically like this. E, G, B, and D. There you go. 
is basically just whole step down from the D minor. From the two, we go whole step down all the way. Then we have a C major seven. You're actually playing C major nine to be exact. C major seven with tension nine. For the fourth bar, we're gonna play one again, chord one again, but this time we're gonna modify it a little bit. We're gonna play a C major six nine. I didn't make that up, y'all. So what you're gonna do is, we're gonna only move this note again, this finger again, move just to the left by a whole step this time. So pretty easy, right? So again, the two, finger number three, move to the left, ever so slightly, half step down, and then we go to the one, and we move again, the finger number three, the same finger that you moved earlier, but this time a whole step down. There you go. Now you play a four bar phrase of the two, five, four progression. So it's gonna sound like this. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There you go. So you just played a two five form progression in the key of C. So how do you practice this? Well, let me let me state the goal first, okay? At the end of the day, you're gonna have to be able to play two five form progressions in all 12 keys. But, 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 wait a minute. You don't have to rush it. You have to develop it slowly but surely, but internalizing it is the most important thing. So to begin with, the best way to learn this right now is just play in two five one in C first. Just like that, just like that. You wanna be able to play it until you don't have to think about it. Like at the first time when you drive a car, you're probably paying so much attention to the road, to what happened with your hand, what happened with your foot. But after a while, you can just driving while talking to each other. So you have to be able to reach to that point before moving forward. So you can play D minor, G, C with no problem whatsoever. Yes, enjoy it. After you're comfortable with the key of C, now you can try to play in a different key. I would suggest you to start with the key of C, F, B flat, and E flat. Why those four key? Because there's one observation that I found that 70% of the real book is in the key of either C, F, B flat, or E flat. But at the end of the day, you still want to be able to play in all 12 keys. So you might be asking, so if I'm ready to move on, and what should I do with the right hand when I have to play in the key of F or in the key of B flat? Once you understand scale degree, you will be able to do it by yourself. You're going to be able to find the notes by the flat 3, 5, flat 7, 9, etc, etc. But in the meantime, I got you covered. Because you can find in the link below, there will be a link to a video that is called a 251 sequence exercise in 12 keys. In that video, you can go directly to F and you can see what I do in 251 in the key of F. So now, after you feel more comfortable playing in four different and separate keys, you can start to learn it in a sequence. So basically, you start from the two of C, which is D minor, go to G, go to C, C69, and you transform the C into a C minor. Now we're in the key of B flat, right? C minor, F, B flat and you transform the B flat major 6 9 into a B flat minor and so on and so forth until you find the D minor again but did you notice something? You haven't actually played all 12 keys because you've never played F in the sequence. So you have to repeat the sequence, start from F. I like to play from here. This is a G minor. Remember, if I say in the key of F, that means the two is G minor, isn't it? So this is G minor, C, F, transform it into an F minor, B flat, E flat, E flat minor, and D flat and so on and so forth.
Now, let's say you already learn it by four different keys and you already master it in the sequence exercise. What do you want to do next? Well, what you can do is you can try to play it in the context of a song. You can try using Sandal by playing the harmonic changes in Sandal. You basically already play five different sets of 2-5-1 progression. And if you play Afternoon in Paris, you basically already play three different sets of 2-5-1 progression. And if you play Siora, you already play four sets of 2-5-1 progressions. Don't worry, you don't have to play the melody just yet. Don't worry about the melody. You can just play the harmony itself like this. Now, as I promised in the beginning, I have a bonus tips for you. But before we go there, if you haven't already, please obliterate the like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to this channel, and this is a cute piglet for you as a gift. Now, the problem with playing the two five from progressions in the first inversion is one, it's kind of taking up space. <laughs> it's almost like one whole octaves. But not only that, for some key, it's probably gonna be way too low, especially if you try to put it in your left hand. So let's say I wanna play E minor on my left hand and I'm gonna improvise with my right hand. If I play E minor right here, this is way too low. It's way too muddy. But if I play here, I feel like it's pretty high. It's taking a lot of space that I wanna use for playing my right hand. See, it's like taking up a lot of space. So what I can do is, instead of taking up this much space, I can just reorganize this, folding it a different way, still playing the same exact notes, but in different configurations. So it allow me to use this extra space with my right hand. So what I'm gonna do is, let's say if I can play this F sharp right here, I'm gonna put this an octave lower, right? And what if, I open up more space by taking off that D and putting it down here. So now I have this. From here, from this to this. Now I have much more space to play with. So now let's try to build the 251 from D minor, but this time from a third inversion. So let's go back to the first inversion first. The first inversion is gonna be like this. Root, flat three, five, flat seven, nine. Now we're gonna bring down the nine lower, an octave lower, and we're gonna also put down the flat seven, down lower, an octave lower. So now for the right hand, instead of starting from the flat three, we are actually starting from the flat seven. So D minor is gonna be like this. So this is how it looks like with the two, five, one progression. And the best way to practice this is just the way you practice your first inversion. Focus individually in one key at the time. And then after that, you move to the next key, which is C minor, F, B flat, until you feel very comfortable with that. After you finish all 12 keys, or probably just four or five keys, then you're ready to go jump into the sequence. There you go. Now you know how to master a 2-5-1 progression. So what's next? Well, you might just be ready to learn to improvise over it. I'll see you in the next video.